Now we are going to see how to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of a continuous function on a closed interval. The way to do that is referred to as the closed interval method. We have seen in the previous video that if a function has a local extremum at c, then this value c is critical. From this we can deduce that if we have a continuous function on a closed interval, then the absolute maximum and minimum exist, as we have seen before, and they must occur either at an endpoint of the interval or at a critical value of the function that lies in that interval. This is because, because of the extreme value theorem, the absolute maximum and minimum of the function on the interval exist. And let's say we are um, looking at how to find the absolute maximum. So this maximum exists and occurs, let's say, at a value c. So we have f of c is a maximum. And either c is one of the endpoints a or b, or if it is not, then c has to be a point inside the interior of the interval. And therefore, f of c is a maximum on this open interval, and it is a local maximum. Because it's a local maximum, <clears throat> by Fermat's theorem at the top of this page, c must be critical. So all this leads to, all these observations lead to a method to find the absolute maximum and minimum of a continuous function on a closed interval, that is referred to as the closed interval method. So to find this absolute maximum and minimum of a continuous function on a closed interval, first we're going to find all critical values of the function f that are in the interval. Then we're going to evaluate the function at the endpoints a and b of the interval and at all the values that we found in the first step. And according to the CRM, the maximum has to be among these values and so has to be the minimum. Therefore, the smallest value that we find in that list is the absolute minimum, and the largest value that we find is the absolute maximum. Let's look at some examples. Let's say we want to find absolute maximum and minimum for the following functions, starting with the function x cubed minus 3x plus 1 on the closed interval negative 3, 2. So, the first step is to find all critical values of the function in the interval. So, uh, because we have a polynomial, the critical values are the zeros of the derivative, since the derivative is defined everywhere. So, we calculate the derivative. We obtain 3x squared minus 3, which factors as 3x minus 1x plus 1. That means we have two critical values, negative 1 and 1. In this case, they are both in the interval negative 3, 2. So we evaluate the function at negative 3, at negative 1, at 1, and at 2. So we plug these values in the original function. For instance, um, at negative 3, if I plug negative 3 in the function, I get negative 3 cubed. This is negative 27. Then I subtract negative 3 times negative 3, so that's plus 9. I get negative 18 plus 1, negative 17. Similarly, when I pl plug negative 1, I get 3. When I plug 1, I get negative 1. And when I plug 2, I get 3. The smallest value is negative 17. Therefore, this is the absolute minimum, and it occurs at negative 3. The largest value is 3. Therefore, the absolute maximum is 3, and it occurs both at negative 1 and at 2. The second example is a function 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4 on the interval negative 2, 1. Again, this is polynomial, so the derivative is defined everywhere, and therefore critical values are only the zeros of the derivative. The derivative here is 6x squared plus 6x. Factoring out 6x, we get 6x times x plus 1. So we have two critical values, 0 and negative 1. Both critical values are in the interval negative 2, 1, so we evaluate the function at negative 2, at negative 1, at 0, and at 1, plugging these values in the original function. For instance, you see that when you plug 0 in the original function, you get 4. Similarly, when you plug negative 2, you get 0, when you plug negative 1, you get 5, and when you plug 1 in, you get 9. <coughs> that means that the smallest value 
in this list is zero, so this is the absolute minimum, and it occurs at negative two. The largest value is nine, so this is the absolute maximum, and it occurs at one. Moving on to the third function, which is x over x squared plus 1, we are looking for its absolute maximum and minimum on the interval 0, 2. So, critical values are those where the derivative is 0 or undefined, so we calculate the derivative. It's a quotient, so we use a quotient rule. Derivative of the top is 1, multiplied by the bottom x squared plus 1 minus derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, multiplied by the top, which is x, so we get minus 2x squared, and this is over the bottom squared. After simplification at the top, we get 1 minus x squared, which factors out as 1 minus x, 1 plus x. That means that we have two critical points, 1 and negative 1, which are the two zeros of f prime, and f prime here is defined for every x, because the bottom x squared plus 1 is defined for is non-zero for all x. But you see that negative 1 is not in the interval 0, 2. So even though 1 and negative 1 are two critical values for the function, for the restriction of the function on the interval 0, 2, only 1 has to be considered. So we evaluate the function at 0, at 1, and at 2. And we obtain 0 at 0, 1 half at 1, and 2 fifths at 2. Therefore, the smallest value is 0, and this is the absolute minimum, which occurs at 0, and the largest value is 1 half. Therefore, this is the absolute maximum, and it occurs at 1. Consider now the function f of x is x to the 2 third on the closed interval from negative 1 to 3. The derivative of this function is 2 third x to the negative 1 third, which I can rewrite as 2 over 3 cubic root of x. 0 is the only critical value for this function, because f prime cannot take the value 0. Well, you can see that if you set this equal to 0, you're not going to find any solution. But 0 is critical, because f prime is not defined at 0. You see that you cannot plug x equals 0 in this formula, because we have this power of x at the bottom. So we are going to evaluate the function at the endpoints, negative 1 and 3, and at the critical value 0, which lies in the interval. At negative 1, the value of the function is 1, right, because negative 1 to the 2 third is negative 1 to the 1 third, which is negative 1. That you square, so you get 1. At 0, we get 0, and at 3, we get cubic root of 9, which is approximately 2.1 and it's the largest value taken by the function. Therefore, the smallest value is 0, which is the absolute minimum, and it occurs at 0. The largest value is cubic root of 9, which is the absolute maximum, and occurs at 3. Finally, let's consider the same function x to the 2 third, but on a different interval, the interval from negative 4 to negative 2. As we have seen, 0 is the only critical value for the function x to the 2 third, but this time, the critical value does not lie in the interval. Therefore, we're going to evaluate the function only at the endpoints, negative 4 and negative 2, because there is no critical value inside this interval. At negative 4, the function takes a value cubic root of 16, which is approximately 2.5. And at negative 2, the function takes a value cubic root of 4, which is approximately 1.6. Therefore, the smallest value is cubic root of 4, and is therefore the absolute minimum, and it occurs at negative 2, while the absolute maximum is cubic root of 16, and occurs at negative 4. Now you should turn to the homework before you <coughs> do the sample quiz for this model, and then take the quiz.